This is the plaintiff, Annette Good. She says she was scammed into buying a piece of junk car from the defendant. Now he refuses to take the car back and return her money. The defendant has ignored her. She needed to get his attention, filed this lawsuit, and is now suing him for the $2,237.12. She's out. This is the defendant, Christopher James Short. He says the 2002 Lincoln, with 182,000 miles on it, was in excellent mechanical condition, and it drove like a cream puff, so the plaintiff bought it. Once she had it, she started to complain about every little thing, and he told her he was sorry, but there was nothing more he could do for her. Oh, she didn't like that. She's been harassing and threatening his family ever since, and that isn't cool. He's accused of unloading a hoopie. The defendant has filed a camera suit for $1,500 for harassment. All parties, please use your radios. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a piece of junk from the defendant that the defendant called a car. But the defendant says the 2002 Lincoln with 182,000 miles was in perfect condition. It's the case of your Lincoln was shot. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, in. Okay, Ms. Good, you bought a car and you don't want it. Yes, ma'am. Why not? <laughs> What's going on? Some of everything is wrong with it. Mechanical. Wait, well, who, you bought the car from the defendant? Yes, ma'am. How did you find the car advertised? Where, how did you it know? It was on offer up. Offer up. So did you go test drive it? Yes. Did you take a mechanic to look at it? No, ma'am. All right, so you bought the car. Is there any paperwork from the sale of the car? No, ma'am. Nope, no paperwork? Who needs paperwork, right? Till you get to court. Nothing, no bill of sale, anything? I have this. Yes. Okay, yeah. let me see what that. What'd you do with it? <laughs> What, what did I What'd do? What'd you do with the paperwork? I gave it to her. Okay. You didn't keep a copy of anything? <laughs> no, ma'am. Do you do this a lot? No, well, like, my uncle owns a shop, so a lot of times customers will come, and if I can, like, I'll buy that car. If it's a nice car, I'll get it. Or some people just come in and the repairs are too, too great. Do you work at your uncle's shop? I do. Oh, okay. And yeah. are you a mechanic? I do the cleaning for his cars. Okay. So, like, I can do tires and stuff like that, okay, but yeah. yeah. So you obtained the car from this fellow, mm -hmm. and then you sold it. That's what you do when you do get the cars? You, you'll sell them? How many do you yep. sell a year? Um, well, I keep a lot. I mean, maybe three, four. Okay. What do you do with the ones you keep? I keep them. Okay. Like, that's a bad habit, like, really. It's really a bad habit. Like, I Because you can ask her. How I, I say that have? about every car. I'm like, I should keep this car. Like, how, seriously. How many cars do you have? Five right now. Okay, because it's an addiction. I know because I live with a man with that addiction. <laughs> anyway, so tell me, so what goes wrong with the car and how fast does it go wrong? Um, the next day it started, I had to go get it inspected. It wasn't past inspection, so I had to pay the guy at the inspection station extra $50 to get it passed. What does that mean? You bribed him? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, extra okay. $50. Okay, all right. <laughs> To get it passed. I don't usually yeah. have people tell me that they bribe somebody <laughs> to for. Yeah. All right, so go on. Uh, extra fifty dollars for it to pass because it need windshield wipers and stuff. Okay. Um, about two hours later, it start to check engine light. Come on. I took it to the shop, and they did a bunch of codes came on it. Okay. Then it starts smoking. And then you call him, and you send her money. Yes, because I spoke with her mechanic. All he said was wrong with the car was it needed a tune-up. I sent him the money to do the tune-up. That's all. I didn't have Why to do that. Why did you do that? Just because I'm a nice person. Like, you can see my... Did you my, think you were legally obligated to do it? I knew I wasn't legally obligated Why to do it. Why aren't you legally obligated to do it? It was sold as is. Okay. Now, what does as is mean? As is is, you know, in the condition that... Actually, is, let me ask her. What do you think <laughs> as is means? Well, as is on his um, offer up statement was... Clean vehicle for sale, everything works, power windows, door seats, sunroof, also mirror, has fresh oil, good tires, cool it flush, new brakes. This is a luxury car at its best. For $1,500? No, $1, leaks, no mm. leaks, squeaks, or rattles. For $1,500, yeah. right? Is there any sentence he said in the advertisement that is a lie? All of it. Do you have a right to rely that a 2002 Lincoln with 182,000 miles can be in good working order? Obviously not. I don't think so. What do you say? 2002 Lincoln. Uh, depend on how they uh, maintain. No, 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 not depend. Can you ever rely on a car that's 17 years old with 182,000? Absolutely. Really? If you check it out and beforehand, yes, you can. 
Wow. Boy, you just be careful going inside the card room. Was there a leak? Yes. Okay. Do you have any evidence that there's yes, a leak? When was the transfer of the car? On the third, I think. And she did leave off one part. It definitely says, welcome to bring a mechanic. Oh, for sure. I mean, everyone's always welcome to bring a mechanic. Nobody does because they don't want to pay the mechanic 100 bucks. Right. But Not then they want to cry later about the expenses. <sighs> Needs valve cover, oil leak under car, want pass inspection. What's that mean? When did you bribe somebody to pass the inspection? That was on the 4th. So this is a, an estimate from the guy who accepted your bribe? No. This looks like a receipt saying it's $317 for the repairs the day after. So you sent 150 how come? I was paying him to do the tune-up, what he told me. That was his labor cost for the tune-up, and she okay. was buying did the parts. Did you two talk about that 150 No. All right, how did that happen, then what happened there? We didn't know what to talk okay, about. Okay, when you call, do you ever call him and say, hey, the car has a problem? Yes. And what does he say to you? He had like he don't remember selling me the car. <laughs> that sounds crazy, because it is crazy. Well, that sounds crazy. Well, that's what you said. I presume <laughs> he means about the problems, Wait. not about selling you the car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what happens? He hang up. All right, but then how did, do you know that he paid 150 No. Okay, did you pay 317 Yes. Who'd you pay the 150 to? To her. Okay, he says he gave you $150? I sent it through Cash App. Show me the Cash App. She denies it. Show me your thing. She gonna deny everything I, I say, I don't Yana. care. I know how Cash App works. Show me the proof so I can see that you're right and she's a liar, and then we'll get to our verdict much quicker. Is he gonna find a Cash App payment to you for 150 bucks? No. You know something? Oh, uh, no. I was saying about the cash out. He's, he talked to me. She didn't she remember. Oh, did you get it, 150 bucks? Yeah. And she, oh, it said I see. You just, she didn't know that you got 150 <laughs> yeah. bucks? Yeah. And I Were gave you lying to me by when I said that he sent you 150 bucks <laughs> because he sent it to her? No. Your answer was, I never got that. He's not going to find that. I, and now I'm hearing that the person standing next to you, who is your what? Daughter. daughter. Your daughter got it? Did you not know your daughter got no. it? No, I didn't. You didn't know your daughter got 150 bucks, so your daughter's a thief? She was stealing the 150? No, you said it. Well, it sounds know. like that's what you're saying. If you didn't know it, either that or you're just a liar, and I just mm. caught you in it. No, I didn't know. All right, so what are your complaints? The car is heating. It's not drivable. It's not drivable. It's heating okay. up on the hood. Well, guess what? You bought an as-is car. What did you think that meant? I didn't know it was going to do this. Yeah, you know what? You're $150 richer than you should be because he didn't have to pay you that $150. But you know what? I got to sit here and listen to you and believe all the words you're saying to even start to remotely consider whether or not you'd be entitled to anything. And I'm having a problem with that. Did you know anything about a leak? Was there a leak when you had it? No. There and was... you had a mechanic look at it before you put it on the market? Yes. Okay. And now you have a counterclaim against her for $1,500 for what? For coming to my house, coming to my work office. Tell me about that. So, well, first I got text messages saying, we know where you stay. Like you, I'm not hiding from you. I sent you the address to meet me. I got a call to come down to the office from my office manager uh, one morning because they had just left the office as well. So same threats to him. Well, we know he stays up there. This and So he, just, he was making me aware. OK. Um, based on what I'm listening to, you need to understand what an as-is sale is. That's why you need to have the mechanic with you when you look at the car. Because unless there's a specific warranty that is violated, you don't get to come back later and complain about a thousand something dollar car. What year car is this? O2. O2. Old enough to vote. All right. On your counterclaim against her for harassment, why? They're just asking for their money back. Why is that harassment? I could call you and ask you for my, my money back or text you. I don't have to come to your place. I don't have to say I know where you stay and that yeah, just to you, get you know, uh, money back. Zero on your counterclaim for harassment, zero on the claim against you. It's an as is sale. Good All luck, right. folks. <laughs> yes. That worked. The plaintiff is on her way out of the courtroom is good. What are you thinking right now? Uh, it's okay. It's gonna be fixed. The car still be fixed. I love the way you say this. You're suing him and you say, well, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay with you? you yeah. You're not mad? You're no, not upset? No, I'm not mad. Cause he'll get what's coming to him. Well, he gonna yeah, sell he seems someone, like a pretty decent guy. He's going to sell someone else a car, and they're going to have some problem with it. And he's not going to be so lucky, probably. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry it worked out this way for you. Okay? Thank you. Thank Good you. luck. Get the car fixed. Thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. James Short. You, you know, you, you seemed like you were fair doing fair. You, you really didn't have to give her that 150 bucks back? No, sir, I did not. 
Uh, you know, I, I, I try to do the best I can to help people. Um, I'm no mechanic, you know. Yeah, well, you uh, unfortunately, said that up front, no yeah, question. I have about. to rely on other people's words to tell me the car is good, yeah. and it was good. Uh, it's a used car. Okay. I'm, it's unfortunate, but you know, I, I did the best that I could. Well, good for you. So, Congratulations. Thank you. Doors that way. All right. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Harvey? Well, I mean, look, if you really want to buy a car with that kind of mileage, not only get it checked out by a mechanic, but you can demand a limited warranty, say 30 days, that the car is not going to fall apart.